Mixing with my plugin of the week comes from Empirical Labs. It's the Big Freak. That's what I'm calling it, the Big Freak. I don't know if that's how they pronounce it. It is an sort of emulation of their Little Freak, which is a single rack unit device that uh, is basically a five-band EQ, high-pass, low-pass filter. It's got a little bit of saturation built into it, a de built into it, a whole bunch of things. So you could plug an instrument into it. Um, this is kind of a, a variation of that in the same way that the Arouser plugin is an, a sort of variation of the, de of the Distressor, excuse me, taking on a lot of the characteristics of what you would get from the Distressor, but then kind of adapting and putting some interesting twists on it that kind of make it a unique thing in its own right. And so a similar thing has happened here with the Big Freak. And uh, so let's take a look. So uh, what we have here on the overall display here, we have a little you know, uh, frequency display here. So as you make your individual boosts and attenuations and stuff like that, it will show up on the display. Um, nothing exotic on that end. Uh, well, let's start from the top here. We have uh, basically you know, uh, a section here for presets. You can increase or decrease the size of the display. Uh, there's a little help menu. You can access the uh, manual and all that sort of thing from there. You have high pass and low pass filter. You have a high uh, shelf uh, here and a low shelf here. Uh, you have a six band EQ. Each individual band can be placed in or out. And there's a whole ton of features that are kind of added in uh, along this. We'll get into it in a second. There's a finisher stage, which goes at the very end. So this is a uh, saturation um, uh element that you find in a lot of the um, uh, Empirical Labs products. Uh, it's primarily an odd harmonic uh, type of distortion. And to tag along with that, you have an oversample. So if you're driving in a bit of the finisher in there to add a little saturation to warm some things up a little bit, then you can put the oversampling there to kind of quell some of the aliasing effects that you might get from, uh, from overdoing it if you do. Uh, now, so there's some interesting things about the design of this, and uh, let's go over just some of the individual bands here just to kind of talk about it. So what you have here is a normal boost attenuation circuit. So here, if I boost a frequency, you'll get that. Now, if I work with this, I have a range control. And what this does is it shifts it from a, a plus 15, minus 15 to plus 30, minus 30. So I can increase or double the range. There, I can solo the band, right? So I could hear just the, the boost or this, the area that I'm using. So that can also be kind of cool for effects. The frequency, you'll see that every band goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So you have a full range of frequencies on it, right? So we could just kind of sweep it all the way around. But then if I hit the F button here, it now narrows it to plus minus an octave around the area. That way you could just sort of fine tune the frequency within that particular area. So that's just a kind of a cool way of giving you the full range of the frequency spectrum as you go, and then also having the ability to um, uh, to focus it in with that particular range wherever it is. So very handy tool. Um, you have a width control, right? So this allows you to go from very narrow and tight of to a wider kind of cue. And then they have an interesting feature here, which you don't see a lot. Uh, there are some devices that have had this in the past. I think uh, some of the Clark Technic. EQs actually had a kind of flat top uh, to them. These are the the uh, uh, like 31 band parametric EQs. Had, there were some of them that are a model that had like flat top. And uh, the only other one I could think of is the EOSIS um, Air EQ, the premium one, which had this fire and water kind of thing that would give you a flat top kind of thing. And so if you take this slope what you have here is it gives you the ability to sort of flatten out the curve here. So rather than having something that is always peaking, and, and this becomes more relevant when you work on certain elements uh, where you want to kind of find a boost within a particular frequency range. And it's sort of like having a shelving EQ, uh, you know, a, a band-limited shelving EQ um, that you know, works within a particular area. So for things like guitars and stuff like that, it's amazing because sometimes you, you focus in on a particular frequency and then it brings out a certain bad aspect even though the overall area works really well because you're hitting a peak at a particular frequency. So you get it centered, right? But then you can kind of flatten it out there. So what you do is you kind of get the boost in that general area the way that you want, but it covers a broader area uh, with that boost. 
very cool way of working. And you could see how this would be sort of like uh, two shelving EQs sort of butted against each other. Um, so that you got that idea right there, which is kind of cool. So you have all the variations in between as well. You see the big number display down at the bottom. Uh, so you could see exactly what frequencies that you're boosting and attenuating. Uh, there's also a cool feature here, which is that, you know, maybe just in terms of organization and working, you wanted to say, move this band over to the next one, right? So you could do something different and then just kind of keep the frequencies that you're boosting sort of in line. You could paste that in here. Now all of a sudden it occupies this with the orange band and then you could do something different with a lower frequency um, in on, um, on this. And that way, as you go left to right, you're kind of going up and down the frequency spectrum. So just having all of that flexibility in terms of full frequency range with each band, copy and paste, and all these basic controls, it kind of makes it, it not kind of, it does make it a very unique EQ. You got the individual elements here, you got the solo features within it, uh, the frequency narrowing, so you could really hone in. And this works great at everything from a mastering uh, grade equalization uh, giving you loads of flexibility on that end, um, you know, to just working on individual tracks. Uh, also has, you know, uh, is is nice on the CPU, so you're not crushing the CPU with everything, even when you go up with the oversampling, and uh, sounds great. So let's just let's just kind of dive in and do a little basic thing here. So just have like a full mix coming in here, like my, just for the sake of uh, clarity here. I'm just going to kind of mute out the vocals just to work on the instrumental, make it a little bit easier to talk over. And let's just start with the high pass, low pass filter. So there's a couple of unique things about this, the way that this works. Uh, you select a frequency here, but you also have uh, the ability to to uh, set what um, you know uh, what the the uh, order is, right? So you can go in in 60b increments there to to um, adjust it there. The on off is here, right? So you could see that there was nothing going on in the display. You'll see that it's red, and it's the same thing with the shelf. Right, so the on-off is actually here. If it's red, it's off. If it's uh, white, then it's on. Uh, so you would set your frequency here. And if you want to adjust the Q, you hit the Q knob, and now this becomes basically a resonant filter, and now you can kind of work with it um, uh, that way as well. So you could sort of flatten it out if you kind of want to uh, push it in, right, to kind of like slowly sort of uh, tone down the low end if it's a little woofy, but do it in a more musical way. Or if you want to give something a little bit of extra thud, you can also kind of work with it from that perspective and, and dial the cue up. To go back to the frequency selection, you hit this. Now it lights up yellow, right? Unlike the one that you see here, right? Which is not lit at all because the cue has not been adjusted. And, uh, and you can go back to adjusting the frequency. So let's just kind of work with that a little bit, see if we can find something here. that little bump there on the bottom and the top and just kind of uh, tightening it up a little bit you know adds like a nice you know overall texture uh, to the sound you know uh, you know kind of framing it I guess is is one way to say it um, the shelving EQ is kind of interesting and and let's kind of go over this next the low shelf is fixed at a frequency of 120 Hertz now in the documentation the high shelf they don't designate uh, what frequency is, but it looks like just from, you know, just from running it, that it's somewhere like around 10 K that that's what the, um, that that's what the shelf is. So it's at a fixed frequency. So I know that's going to bug you out here for certain things, but I'm going to show you how you can sort of compensate for that, uh, working with the other band. So for example, let's just say that, uh, I wanted to go back here to the queue and maybe set that to its kind of normal, uh, setting here 
or, or maybe just kind of set it so it's more or less flat. I could use the high shelf as sort of a tilt kind of coming up, and you'll see that as I kind of go with this here. So here we go. Right, just to kind of get a little bit more, you know, a different kind of control than just resonating the filter on the top end. So that's fixed, and let's just say that you don't like that. Another way to work this would be to work within a band up on the top end frequency. So let me just take the low pass filter just so we can kind of see what's going on here. So let's say I do a boost here. I'm going to shift the frequency down a little bit. But now what I do is I, um, you know, I can, well, I'll adjust the width in a second, but I just flat top the thing out. And then um, I'm going to shift the frequency up higher over here. So if I kind of push this up, now effectively, um, by pushing this up on the top here, I can now use the width control to sort of extend the shelf outward, you know, into an area where, where I want. And essentially, I'm, because I'm pushing up above the frequency spectrum here, I can extend this down um, to uh, effectively get the same kind of thing as a shelf. And if I want to soften it a little bit, right, I can just lay this out, pull that back on the flat top, right, and then kind of kind of you know, gradually drag it up a little bit more. So let me kind of pull it back a little bit more into a more mastering grade range here, and let's uh, follow along with that. So now I, I kind of pushed it up here on the top end. Let's kind of do a, a similar kind of thing on the low end, just to kind of give you an idea of how this can work on the low end. So I could do a similar type of thing here. If I want to, uh, you know, go flat top here, pop this sucker on, and then I could also sort of extend this out, right? So I can extend out a range here. And, uh, okay, let me test my frequency. I can control the width. Let me just adjust the frequency here. This is what I meant to do. And now I could just kind of push in with this guy. Let me lift it a little bit, sort of extend it out. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little area down here. I'm gonna pull this out. Let me pop this into place so we can see it here. It's gonna drop a little bit, of, uh, uh, a narrower area here, kind of in the in the low mids, just to kind of tuck that in a little bit.
And you hear just even with some subtle adjustments how you can really kind of open things up here a little bit. This is a sweet EQ. I mean, I've I've experimented a bit mostly with uh, mastering and kind of using. You can hear how clean it sounds. Um, and then, you know, if you start driving into this, working on individual drum tracks and things like that, you can also uh, just, you know, even just working on, uh, let's just say here, let's just call this up here, just to use the finisher, just for saturation purposes, just for the drums. This is this has got uh, bass and drums in it. This is just on the vocal, I think. There it is. Me get up and me fresh up and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Me dress up with the best up and me left yard. Oh. A straight positivity me manifest and me no upon my blessings. Jan and go press pass. No. Go down a head tracks, that's the best part. Cliff, line up and redeem me have a tune for bless hearts. Tell them how me feeling and what we dealing with. Revelation, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fine. No make no go make nobody blow my eye. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fine. No make no negative energy kill my vibe. Me have to keep me energy high. If you read, me no biggie, me no ready if you die. But if I soldier say, then me ready if you fly. Like a bird in the morning, me take to the sky and spread me wings like a eagle. I swear I over people. Play a listen on your vehicle. Your headphones are your Bluetooth speaker. This is a distress reliever. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fine. No, ain't no go make nobody blow my. You see, like, all the flexibility that you can have just working with it quickly uh, in, you know, the finisher. Maybe I'm overusing it. I know I'm overusing it in, in some of this. But the oversampling really does clear up the artifact of the uh, aliasing on it. Um, and uh, this is uh, one that uh, just very, very recently came out. So I've had a small amount of time to play around with it. And uh, so far, I really enjoyed it. I think it's really a great um, addition uh, to their collection, well, collection, this is their second uh, plug-in release outside of the ones that have been released, um, emulations by other companies like Universal Audio, uh, but a great addition, and uh, glad to see that Empirical is uh, moving into, um, you know, more plug-in software kind of things. Uh, I love the arouser, that's a, that's a, um, a big favorite of mine in a lot of sessions, because it has some unique features that you don't get from the distressor. And um, this is, I'm not familiar with the little freak, but uh, the big freak here is uh, working so far for me. So I'm really digging it. All right, there you have it. There's the um, Empirical Labs Big Freak. It is Mixing with Mike's plugin of the week. <laughs> 